Well, howdy strangers. It's been a long time since I've made an unboxing video here, uh, or receiving video. Uh, I guess I kind of got in my own head about making these videos and felt like uh, there was, you know, already a lot of content of this kind on, on YouTube and just thought maybe I was just, you know, spitting in the ocean, kind of just didn't need to add any more toy unboxings to what's already a crowded field. But anyway, I've decided to get over that thanks to some of, uh, some of you guys' encouragement and just come back and go ahead and share some of my fun unboxing. So it's going to be like a little early Christmas here in the middle of October if you're seeing this now. Uh, before I unbox this, I just want to get this out of the way. I got this yesterday from Amazon. We got the new Mini Comics Manny Faces. Uh, he just came in. Uh, I had originally ordered him when he was on pre-order and then they canceled my pre-orders. And then I found a couple, maybe about a week ago or so, they were available again on Amazon. So I went ahead and ordered one. We've got here the robot face and we've got the original here to compare. And I'll go ahead and change them up real quick and show you a little better. Uh, we've got the, uh, the monster face. Hopefully we get the monster face here. Okay. Now remember this one I modified and painted the teeth white. So that normally he would just have green teeth. And uh, let's see, last but not least we'll go to the human face. Okay. Those are pretty similar I think. Just kind of a little different coloration on the cheeks. I look at it blue versus purple. And kind of the look more than the, you know, just stern look of, of the old one. This one looks more like he's having a constipated growl. So uh, other than that, they're very similar. This is supposed to be more like the original mini comic, and he is from what I've compared. So anyway, cool to get one, although, you know, I probably could have been okay without him. Just this original one really uh, is the one that is nostalgic for me and that I care the most about. So anyway, just wanted to show you that guy and get him out of the way. If any of you were wanting to get on that and order that they should be available again now i think big bag toy store had them as well um but they might have sold out the pre-order so check and keep checking i still have not been able to find moss man in my area i live in california and when i look online to find him on, on walmart he's always priced at 68 or 69 or 70 dollars from one of walmart's uh you know independent sellers not from walmart themselves haven't seen him at a Walmart store, which I don't have any really close to me. The nearest ones are about an hour away. There's three all about an hour away in different directions. And I've only been to one of them, but uh, they don't have any Masters of the Universe anymore, so they're not going to carry him. So, uh, yeah, kind of wondering what's going on with Moss Man. So I've got a mixture of things in here this time around. Some Motu and some G.I. Joe. So uh, we'll go ahead and start with the Motu since that seems to be my, my fan favorites. Who have we got here? Oh, Spike Orr, yes. This one I'm excited about. This is one of the few that we're getting now that seems really nostalgic to me still. A lot of things we're getting are all Snake Men, and uh, I had stopped collecting Motu when I was a kid before Snake Men really came around, so I don't have much nostalgia for them, though I do continue to collect them as an Origins fan. But uh, Spike Orr was one of the original, kind of early on, one of Skeletor's villains. And I just like his look a lot. I like his colors, his purple and his blue and all his spikes. He kind of reminds me of a prickly pear or a cactus man or something like that. You know, he definitely wouldn't want to run into this guy. It'd be painful. Uh, so let's see, on the back, we've got the usual artwork there. It says, covered head to toe in spikes, the evil blacksmith spike or crafts much of Skeletor's nefarious arsenal. And we've got him fighting uh, one of these stone guys, Rockon or Stonedar, don't know, uh, didn't have any of those. And Extendar on this side, and another figure I never had. Spikor is also one that I never had as a kid, but I definitely remember him. So I'm, I'm excited and very happy to add this guy to my collection here. Well, we've got a second Spikor. Just go ahead and set him aside. So these have been in my pile of loot for a while. These are the Motu Skeleton Warriors. So these guys are really cool. The first I've seen them or taken a look at them. I was really excited to see them when they when they uh, announced that they were coming out. I think they're a really cool army builder. They uh, they remind me of the skeletons a little bit from, I think it's Jason and the Argonauts. The, uh, what's the guy's name? Harryhausen, I think, uh, film. Uh, the, one of the guys who's one of the premier animators of like claymation, stuff like that. Some really cool artwork on the front and back. You guys have already been looking at the front while I've been chatting you up. And now you can see the back. Really cool looking stuff there. 
the typical where they're kind of glossy and the background's matte. I'm going to really enjoy having these guys. Um, I think they'll probably be some of uh, Scareglow's soldiers. Of course, I've got two sets of these guys here so that we could uh, army build a little bit. So anyway, like that the, uh, the other guys are fighting here on the top. Look like some more attorney and guards. Kind of look like man-at-arms without, uh, without his mustache there. So that's cool to have uh, another artwork depiction of him. So as usual, yes, the, the artwork on Mo Masters of the Universe toys are the best, I think. I'm going to love to keep and collect this artwork. The weapons are about the color of Scareglow's weapons, so they'll really go along well with Scareglow. You can hear the airplanes landing in the background. Okay, so that's my Motu stuff here. And now we'll get on with the G.I. Joe. So first up, we've got Torpedo. Torpedo is a really cool, uh, he's a scuba diver character. Um, not sure if we ever had one of these as a kid. I think we might have. He, he's definitely familiar to me. He comes with a lot of great accessories. He's got swim fins on his feet, a uh, spear gun, obviously a scuba diving mask and, and tanks. So I think he's one of my favorite overall characters, although I don't have as much use for him because he kind of needs to be in an aquarium or some kind of setting. I loved when I was a kid to uh, take my G.I. Joes in the bath. It was one of my favorite places to play with toys, G.I. Joes and Motu. Uh, but especially G.I. Joe's because we had quite a few boats and uh, you know the, the G.I. Joe hovercraft and the, the Cobra hydrofoil and the Cobra water moccasin which was piloted by this guy Cobra Copperhead so I had definitely had him as a kid as well and was a big fan of him definitely wanted to get this figure he's, he's really nostalgic to me I think I don't know if he was one of my favorite figures or just kind of seems like he is now like his coloration of the uh, sort of aqua blue and, and green, sort of a slime green. Definitely looks like he fits well in the Everglades or the jungles where uh, where their uh, copperhead would be, I guess. Uh, also, where I grew up, there were, I believe, copperheads. And the water moccasin that he piloted, his boat, we also call water moccasins cottonmouths. So you could have called this guy Cottonmouth, but I think copperhead's a good name. So anyway, cool figure to me. Really nostalgic. Enjoy him. Another one was uh, Shipwreck. So we're getting a whole nautical theme going on here. Shipwreck, I uh, just kind of, I liked his sort of sailor, just kind of standard sailor costume that he looked like he was wearing. He was the sailor for a long time. Uh, he's got his parrot, Polly, I believe his name. Some cool accessories. He's got kind of an old pirate looking gun here, silver looking revolver. So uh, an anchor and, and some rope. On the show, he was kind of a womanizer kind of guy. Uh, like I guess maybe, you know, the stereotypical sailor. But uh, I, I always liked his character. I know some people are not big fans of him, but I think he's a pretty cool guy. So we got Shipwreck there. And last of this shipment, we've got a big set here. We've got Scrap Iron and his Armored Drone. So this was one I wasn't sure I wanted to get because he's a little more expensive with this, but fear of missing out kicked me into to getting him. Uh, because I thought maybe at some point I'd like to have this armor drone thing, you know, going going along with the other vehicles and stuff that they have. I've got the Trouble Bubble. I received that recently, um, maybe a month ago. So yeah, this guy, Scrap Iron, he's just a... Uh, I always thought of him as a, um, a troop builder. Never thought of him as an a individual guy, but he kind of is an individual guy. They've got him on the show as an individual guy on the on the cartoon kind of i think sort of a mercenary guy i think he's he ends up being in the he's in the uh the miniseries that serpentor gets created this this figure has a really cool looking scarred face looks like he's been in a burn if you take off his helmet uh, the figure when we had as a kid just had the helmet on all the time so you didn't know what his face looked like so uh this was one i also had as a kid so somewhat nostalgic but i didn't necessarily think i had to have him other than the fear of missing out thing kicking in. These guys also remind me when I was a kid, my brother and I, my, my father had built us a sandbox in our backyard, which was filled with uh, like beach sand, not the white kind of sand that they sell, that they bleach for kids, but more of uh, the construction sand that you, you use for other things. And I think the sandbox was probably eight foot by eight foot or maybe 10 foot by 10 foot. And it seemed like for at least a while, maybe a whole summer or so, my brother and I would go in there every day and build this all, sort of a whole maze of trenches and battlements. And we'd have all our guys set up there and there to fight. And they would fight for, we'd have them, you know, we'd play with them for a while and fight for a while. And then sort of the end always was to bring a hose down and start just sort of slowly filling the trenches with water and everything would start to collapse and erode and fall on itself and crash. And it was, and it would always make this kind of cool looking sea foam because it was that natural sand. We really had a lot of fun in that sandbox for however long we did. I don't know, maybe it might have been a couple years we did it in the summer. It might have just been one year. 
Uh, I don't remember exactly, but I do remember having a lot of fun with that sandbox for a while. So if any of you guys out there uh, are parents and you have kids in the you know six to ten range, they might really enjoy a sandbox if you have space to uh, build one for them. They can play with their toys and maybe they'll get outside and, and get a little sunshine and uh, use their imaginations a little bit. Anyway, that's about it for uh, this episode. So thank you all for joining me as usual. Thanks for being friends of the channel and, you know, subscribing and commenting and all that good stuff. Always appreciate hearing from you all. Uh, let me know what uh, your favorite figures are that you've gotten recently or that you're looking forward to getting. I've recently pre-ordered the Motu Filmation style figures. I think they look really nice. A uh, little simplified compared to the figures that we had as kids, but they do look sort of more like what we, in some ways, wanted to see because they look like the figures from the TV show. Anyway, that's it for now. I don't want to keep you forever. Thanks for joining in. Take care. See you later. Bye now.